Philip is a selfless dude. Every year he makes this journey from the UK or, you know, wherever he's working in the world. Um, he is a world-class cellist, songwriter, producer, composer. Um, he gives us his time, his energy, um, and he's been in the audience today. He's been in the back today. And have you been composing or have you been putting together a reflection of all of the stories today? Something, Something like that. So I guess we're going to get to see what Philip saw today. So our final storyteller is Philip Shepard. When Philip's done, we're going to go to the cocktail party at Alex and Annie Hall. Thank you all so very much. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. We love you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I want you to imagine that you are a young girl. Some of you are, so that's not too difficult. Uh, <laughs> bit of a stretch for me, not being a girl or young. Um, and uh, you're sitting in, you're sitting by this lovely fire here of an evening. Um, you're in a cave, you've got your fire in your cave. It's obviously vented properly, so that's fine. And uh, health and safety is very, very important. And you've got a lovely meal of, of some dried buffalo and maybe some, some of these lovely red beetles. They're, they're very tasty. And you know, you've been out foraging all day. Um, because cause Tim Daly told us to think of the caveman. So I've been thinking about the caveman drawing on the wall. 
And that reminded me of something, which was, I, I remember actually seeing the first ever Peace Love workshop, and it produced this. Now, this is extraordinary. This is a young girl in a cave, putting her hand up against the wall, and blowing a mouthful of crushed beetles at the wall to leave a mark. 40,000 years ago. That gives me goosebumps every single time I think about it. And what's really cool about it is, if you think about it, it's, it's modern art, because she's not done, done what Tim was talking about, just kind of, you know, and we've all done it. I mean, I've done it in a peace love workshop. Door behind with paint, slap it on a piece of paper, and then put it on the fridge. You know, my, my kid's art doesn't go on the fridge, mine does. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a quality control thing going on. Um, <laughs> But what's amazing about this, if you think about it, is the foresight of creating negative space. It's not the impression, it's not her hand, it's the impression her hand leaves when she's not there. And what, what is this actually saying? It's actually saying, I, I am here. This is a girl 40,000 years ago saying, I am here. Say it, say it to yourself, I am here. Do it. Yeah, you sound English, you sound like church in England. <laughs> I am here! I am here! Hell yes, you are. What are. The chances of you being here are infinitesimally, impossibly small. If you filled the Grand Canyon up with grains of sand, it's quite a big place, uh, filled it up with sand and then sent in the youngest child you could find, with a pair of tweezers, blindfolded, there's less, there's actually more chance of them picking out the grain of sand you've selected by colouring blue than there is of you being alive. Think about that for a minute. When you factor in the fact that we live in what's called a Goldilocks planet, which is perfectly temperate, it's neither too hot nor too cold, the chances of you being here are completely, utterly impossible. So when you think about self-worth, just think about that. When you have one of those dark moments that we all have, especially as artists, which we all are in this room, that moment of thinking, well, I am here, despite the fact that it's actually mathematically, physically impossible for me to be alive here, let alone in this room with this random group of people together. I'm not saying you're random. This is a random group of people together. It is impossible. That's quite a nice starting point, I think. But then again, if you think about it, in 40,000 40, years' time, nothing in this room will be here. I don't want to have a downer on it at all, at all, but that still will be there. That bit of art, that girl saying, I am here. She wasn't saying, I was here, I was here. It was not graffiti, this is her saying, I am here. Yeah, if it was Instagram, it'd have quite a lot of likes by now. That's, <laughs> she's a young girl, we know this. That is the oldest existing proof not only of human existence, but the first thing they did was make art. But they made art to survive. And I think that's been the overwhelming message of today. And I don't want to talk about entropy too much. We've heard some amazing things today. And I think the thing that art does is it creates this perfect wrapper to carry ideas forward into the future. Because we're not, sorry to break it to you, we're not going to survive 40,000 years. This building isn't going to survive 40,000 years. No, none of it's going to survive 40,000 years. But ideas will. And we've heard some amazing ideas today from Eames. I'm going to make the classic mistake of reading words out from slides, OK? <laughs> because I haven't got any notes, because I haven't got my glasses. Stay true to yourself and people will come to you. Ukulele, sorry, ukulele, just out of shot here. What a great message. And I think Brianna said something very similar to that, and it's kind of do what makes you happy, because that is actually the right thing to do. That's what restoration looks like, <laughs> right? <laughs> Are you here? Say, so, I am here. I am here. Hell yes. It's a very strange thing, that's an English person. Um, <laughs> all emotions will pass, even the darkest ones will pass. 
Because the chances of you being here are impossible, so there's a reason that you're here. There I promise you there is. I love this one, when you say disability, you're dissing ability. Tim, I've shortened it, that's now a t-shirt. I want some royalties on that. Yours was a little wordy, just giving you some notes there. Um, <laughs> There's no piano in a marching band. I love this, and I don't know why I love it so much. It reminds me there's a Woody Allen film where he, I joined a marching band, um, but I play cello. And there's him putting the stool down, playing like this, and the band, by the time he starts playing, the band have marched, why am I doing this? The band have marched <laughs> on. The art saved Sukio's life. That's, that's a pretty big deal. I mean, that's a responsibility. And, and you know, the seventh son is here. It feels very kind of almost biblical. And there's a, there's a man burning with purpose. And what a beautiful dancer, by the way. Right? Yeah. Stunning. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So 40,000 years time, ideas are left. That's what we're left with. And as I said, ideas are, are super powered by art. They had color in those days as well. It's black and white these days because it's cooler. Um, but the thing about ideas is that they, they exist, I think, in, in a very strange dimensionality because most of our life exists in three dimensions. Four dimensions if you factor in time, whether you agree that it goes forwards, backwards, upwards, downwards, outwards, it doesn't really matter. But there's a fifth dimension. And I think that fifth dimension is this weird thing that is somewhere between goosebumps and love. And I sound like a hippie, I don't care. <laughs> with a Downton accent, I can get away with it, I think. <laughs> I'm actually a cockney, I'm hiding it. But I think you can wrap an idea in goosebumps and it will fly. That's why we share things that make us feel good. That's why we've been tweeting today. When someone said something, you think, oh, I'm going to share that with my followers and my friends. We do that because it gives us that little endorphic rush. Endorphins, goosebumps, Love, those are the things that propagate great ideas. Much as, actually, the way we propagate, if you think about it, the reason you're here against all the odds is that, you know, some caveman, maybe that young girl at some point looks across the cave and sort of kind of looked at another caveman and kind of thought, don't mind if I do, he looks all right. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, the chances of your grandparents meeting are kind of relatively impossible, let alone their parents, their parents, right the way back to that girl in the cave thinking, yeah, <laughs> okay. I mean, that's insane. But it's the endorphic thing of falling in love, which is the thing that is the reason that you're here. So what do we pass on? I think we pass on those ideas with a similar kind of chemical rush. So really what I want you to think about today is what have you heard today, or what would you take away from today that you can tell somebody else. In fact, why don't you tell five people? Hell, tell 15 people. Because any one of those beautiful ideas and those stories, it's our responsibility to bear witness to them, I believe. Because I've talked about ne negative space early, earlier. Negative space is that thing where you have darkness, you fill it with light. Where you have cold, you fill it with warmth. Where you have rubble, plants will grow. You hear Jenna, I mean, you know, where you have tragedy, from that blooms hope and wonder and goodness and purpose. Look at Jose. Everybody here has purpose because they've actually gone right to that edge and in some cases they've stepped over it. They've lived in a state of that negative image. And from that comes everything positive in life. Greatness comes from tragedy. And I honestly think that our job is to Think of this hand and hand those on, if that makes sense. Because our, our negative circumstance, unfortunately at the moment, in this country, in my country, is chaos plus hate. But actually, that's a really great opportunity, because what's the opposite of chaos and hate? The opposite of chaos and hate is peace and love. <laughs> right? And what are we doing here? We are doing peace love. And what a great opportunity. It's like the greatest art and the greatest movements come from the most negative circumstances. So I just want to take a few ideas from today 
try and weave them into something that is not going to last 40,000 years. In fact, by the time you've had a first drink around the corner, you're going to have completely forgotten this. <laughs> Which is fine, as long as it gives you a little goosebump and leaves you a moment to think, what am I going to tell people when I get home? That's the point. This is going to be ephemeral, because also, it might be crap. <laughs> That's my insurance policy. <laughs> my, my true insurance policy is it's going to be fully based on everything we've heard here today. So the content, we can blame that if it's crap. <laughs> Something that Devon said, Quite subtly, was, I love art and I love you. <laughs> oh, God. My favourite artist. What a guy. Devin. What a guy. And I, actually, when I hear that, I hear music. Um, I, I'm, I'm a th I have to write a lot of music very quickly, so I'm a bit of a thief. Da I love art. I love you. Da da dum. Da da da. There's a nice pattern to that. It's kind of, it's got a balance to it. I think we can probably turn that into music. Actually, if we took the notes, that are visible in peace, love, which are, I'm sure you know this already, E-A-C-E-O-E. -E -E. We can say E-A-C, those are notes in E. That's a theme already. Bear with me, bear with me. I need an assistant, really. So E-A-C sounds like this. That's E-A-C-E, -E, I promise you. O is normally a sign for a harmonic, which is one of those things. I'm not going to tell you what that is, doesn't matter. And E at the end. So we can take that, and if we combine that with what Devon said, which is, um, I just wanted you to say I love you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> a bit too keen there. Uh, we could we could kind of make that E A C. That's quite nice. But then there was also something I heard earlier that Nikki said, which was all emotions. With all the emotions, dark, the darkest ones, the darkest ones will pass. And we can take from that the A and the D from all and dark. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for anything, clinging onto stuff here. So, <laughs> so I'm going to try and make up a piece about peace, love, about stuff from those. And um, it's going to be really short. And the best thing is there's a drink afterwards. <laughs> I love art and I love you. Thank you for listening. Wish me luck.